So, I'm uh, currently with uh, Will Freiman from uh, the band Insomnium. So, hello, Will. How are you? Hello, hello. I'm good. I'm good. Nice. So, where are you exactly right now in Finland? Uh, Yes, I'm now in Finland. So after 12, 12 years living in the UK, I've, I've just moved back here two weeks ago. Oh. So I'm kind of like in the middle of move at the moment. So the flat is functional, but it's quite barren. So it's there's not much to show. I, I, I just got my working desk so I can set up my home studio soon. But <laughs> but I've been just like, yeah, we don't have much stuff here. So so getting there bit by bit. Yeah, that's nice. So you you spent some years in the UK. Uh, yeah, where... almost like almost thirteen years. 13. So I lived in what? all across. Like I lived in London, Oxford. I was in Cornwall for a while, and and then for the last last eight years, I've been in New York in in, in northern northern UK. So so quite quite a long time. That's nice. Uh, I was uh, in England this summer. I uh, spent like uh, 10 days there uh, going to Bloodstock. Uh, yeah. I had a, a great time there. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice uh, festival. Yeah. yeah. It's a great festival. Well organized. Uh, seriously, it was, I was surprised how well organized they are. So, um, okay. So I'm Stefan Levike. I'm from, uh, I work for uh, Metal Universe. Uh, oh. So that's uh, an internet metal uh, site. Uh, uh, from Canada, Quebec City, to be oh. precise, Montreal. So you you've been a couple of time uh, in the province of Quebec. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. And I I was never able to see Insomnium. Every single time you came, I was like uh, not in town, or there was obviously something that uh, uh, forbidden me for the experience yeah. and concert of Insomnium. But uh, last time in 2020, I was supposed to be there, but it was canceled because of COVID. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But <laughs> I I know you are coming back in April, Yeah. Uh, but just in Montreal, there's no date uh, uh, in Quebec City. Is that something you you, you, uh, you were looking at and uh, it's not, there's just no promoter or? Uh... I think I was remembering that we would be playing Quebec. Hopefully, um, well, sometimes like you know, sometimes it is with the routing, it's it's hard to kind of make it happen. So so yeah. we'll see if there's off days, we might do some extra days as well. So you know, we always had two shows in Quebec City. So so we have Montreal and Toronto. I can see so yeah, yeah the. So at least we have a few dates in Canada, but like we, we really like Canada. So so ho hope we can do another tour as well with this album. So we can kind of visit more cities than if we if we have to miss Quebec this time. Yeah, I, I will challenge the 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 promoter. <laughs> yeah. I know one of them and I will ask him why Insomnium uh, is not coming <laughs> to uh, yeah. Quebec City because I, I <laughs> There, there are some off days uh, around the, the date of uh, Montreal, so maybe yeah, yeah. If there's off days and we can make it work, like we would be happy to play that. So, so yeah, definitely. We we we, we had really good shows in Quebec. Yeah, and what's the bill? Uh, with uh, which band are you playing? Uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing kind of kind of co-headliner tour with Enslaved. And so Enslaved. Yeah. yeah. Never so it's gonna be, and then we're gonna be have one one supporting band, I think as well. I can't remember what was the band now, but it, it was really good as well. I, I checked them out, and we're kind of yeah. discussing about this thing. So three band lineup. But well, just Insomnium and Enslave, it's already really nice. <laughs> good. <laughs> so, uh, you're one of the founding them uh, member. Uh, I think it was uh, Insomnium was founded in uh, 1997. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So you and Nilo just uh, back then uh, conceive a new band, and um, what was the the first inspiration? What kind of music you were uh, listening back then, and you have the idea because the the scene was uh, really on fire and the melodic death metal with uh, a lot of bands and. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think like we were kind of like all kind of inspired like 
metallic dead metal that was kind of happening over the Sweden. So, but also, you know, in flames some dark tranquility and bands like that, Edge of Sanity. Edge of and Sanity. Then, we're going to like listing like Finnish band as well, like Send Dance and Amorphis and all the sort of genre. And of course, like we're listing like Sepultura and uh, like Pantera, Metallica, all the kind of big bands of 90s. So, so it was kind of like golden era for, for this sort of heavier music. And then, I think like the first bit, like Neil was one year older, we were in the same school. And and, and I think we kind of like, we did some sort of like weird acoustic guitar trio performance in some like spring spring event or something like that. Neil's Neil's piece of music. And then I think that was the kind of like start of the, the kind of band. And then we started practice with real amps and things like that. And then our, our drummer, Marcus, yeah, I, I used to they're from guitar. Too. Yeah, and he used to play guitar in our first incarnation. So, so he was a drummer actually. Oh yeah, wow. But, but then we had to change, like, because he he could never remember what we rehearsed last time. So, so he always kind of forgot everything. Oh. So <laughs> next rehearsals. So he, he was good guitar player, but he never practiced. And then he got more into playing drums. So, so he went to drums. And, and the drum parts he remembered. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah M miraculously yeah i don't know maybe he, he could kind of like visualize the music with drums he was more into playing drums i think he just like yeah he just wanted to become a drummer more than guitar player and you needed a drummer obviously so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that was the power trio of the beginning the yeah that was the power trio nice nice um so uh we'll talk a little bit about the new upcoming album called uh anu 1696 it's a conceptual album as i i read a little bit about it uh maybe you want to uh, say something uh about that release that will come out on uh, february 24th i think so yeah. So it's like our ninth album already. So this is one is kind of conceived during the pandemic time. So, so you know, kind of like coming up with first EP and, and you know, we were kind of like in a bit of a limbo. No one knew like when, when, when tour is going to be kicking off again, when we're kind of able to like, what's the point of releasing music if you can't go on tour or you can't do anything with it. So so everybody was kind of like, well, well then we were just kind of like, it's, it's boring let's do something let's start just writing music and get it out anyways and and, and, and we can start writing stuff and i think like neil came my idea the idea of this sort of short story around it have it as a kind of like backbone for the whole thing and and, and it's more kind of like historical kind of poly like superficial uh, fantasy kind of novel uh taking time uh taking place during that time and then you know that was kind of we had lots of famine in europe including finland as well there was like nothing to eat and then and then people also kind of like there was kind of witch hunts and stuff like that i don't know maybe they were kind of linked in a way people get like just like fed up with everything they kind of stop blaming each other when they don't have anything to eat and so on so very kind of like poor times in the year and really like dark times so that's the kind of like the backdrop for the story and then nilo has always been Really big fan of writing and and, and and writers overall he reads quite a lot and he's always been fan of you know um, other writers and wants to write himself so i think that kind of led to the idea he's been kind of writing books and um, novels and um, he's pretty good at it and um, puts lots of time and effort in it so so he had a nice story everybody liked that and, and then we decided, well, well, let's try to fit the music with the story and um, try to make that as a concept album and release the story along with the music as well. So people if, who want to read it, who wants to read more, learn more, can do that. Yeah, with the original uh, book. Yeah. So you're inspired by, by that book. And I know there's a uh, eight song on the album. And there's also a special EP, Song of the Dusk, that yeah. will be a limited ed edition. I think 2000, There's, if I remember right. Uh, yeah. There's three more songs, and those songs are kind of part of the concept, side stories, maybe? Yeah, 
yeah, they are still kind of part of the story. Uh, they are kind of like related for for listeners to kind of read about them, place them where they want them to be placed in the story. And um, it is just, uh, we just had so much music. It was almost like one and a half hours long. So we were like, Ooh, yeah. man, this, man, this is too much. Like EP is almost, <laughs> EP is like 20 minutes long, I think, three songs. Okay, so first. there's a long song on that EP. Yeah, I'll there's a the long song. My next question, is yeah, there a long yeah. song? Because there's already like three song over seven minutes on the album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have to say, I, I really like your longer song, more yeah, progressive yeah. side of uh, yeah. of Insomnium, and with the album Winter Gates, obvious, obviously you you yeah. bring you brought that concept a step yeah. further. Yeah, yeah. So so it's it's really like three long songs gonna be or quite long songs gonna be on EP as well. So we thought like you know I think album works really well with the eight songs. It's kind of like nice side. You know, you listen that once and then you press play again if you like that. And, and then we still offer some value for your money. So you, you buy an EP, you get three songs in 20 minutes. So, so it's a good, good chunk of music. And, and I think all, all the all the songs on the EP are, are really good as well. It's like, it's not like we don't, we didn't really consider them as a B-sides. We just thought like which of the songs will fit best with the story uh, and the rest of them we're gonna just put them in an EP and then release that as a special thing so just get everything out yeah for for the real diehard fans who wants uh, yeah. a little bit more and I think Marcus said in an interview that uh, those songs were too great to be left over or to be considered besides it's really a part of the whole story but at the same time you already have uh, an album uh, clocking yeah. 50 minutes so uh, yeah. for a little death melodic uh, album i think it's a good time frame yeah. because like yeah. 80 minutes 70 minutes it's maybe it's a little a little bit too much yeah but I think it's a really good idea to separate the two things and uh, to offer a, a full package for people yeah. who want to dig a little deeper in that songwriting session. Exactly. that That's the idea. And, and you know, too much is just too much. Like, you know, I, th I think everybody could just like thought like, you know, you know, let's have a kind of like a nice sort of like side album and then we can put the extra extra songs to another release and then you know people will like that as well so i think it's going to be working really well nice really nice so i can't wait for that album because uh the first single lillian was a really typical insomnium banger i was like listening to it the first time i remembered and then the 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 big lead came in and i was like oh that's marcus <laughs> Because it's the trademark sound of Marcus. The beginning is really insomnium. And then because Marcus is writing a little bit more, uh, he's more involved, I think, in the yeah. writing session since uh, Shadow of a Dying Sun. Yeah. So before that period, it was more uh, only you and uh, Nilo that were uh, yeah. writing the songs. Uh, so how it is to uh, have another... Uh, I think I can say a mastermind because he, yeah. he already have a, a lot of project before Insomnium. Yeah. Uh, how is it to work with him? I think it's great. Like Marcus has been bringing more songs of, for the past two albums, and, and he's been kind of like becoming almost the main main songwriter now. So and then he he's really good musician. He's pretty a musician, writes really good songs, and and, and you know, you know everybody appreciate his work effort and. I, kind of sounds and fans like that so it's great Yanni has also brought in a few yeah. songs and be kind of contributing a lot of Nilo songs so he's also going to bring in another layer so I think it's like together we can add in more kind of diversity a bit more depth to the music because it's not only a few people but actually there's four people writing writing stuff now so so I think I think it's kind of adds the diversity on the album for sure yeah, that's cool because Yanni is from another background totally. He's still yeah. a metal, but like bands with he was uh, at first with Sonata Artica for the first four albums that are uh, really crazy stuff. To me, uh, those four first albums are really nice. And yeah, yeah the Canes of Furring and uh, yeah. Dark Element. So uh, he's more into power metal. So uh, yeah. 
it's I, I didn't know he was like involved a little bit in the songwriting uh, since he, he's in the band. So uh, that was the first, uh, it's the second album he, he's involved. It was on the previous yeah. one also. Yeah. And he sang a little bit, I think on the single Valediction, yeah. he was singing. Yeah. yeah. Great voice, a great addition. Yeah. yeah. Kenny has a really great voice and he's been doing a lot, lot more like clean vocals. So so he, he he's really talented musician as well. So brings right. yeah, and the voice brings the voice in clean voice to the band. That's kind of an all-star songwriting lineup, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> With the three guitar player, you obviously and Yanni and Marcus. And uh, with Nilo, that brings more the lyrical part and also a little music as well, because he, he's playing bass, but he's playing guitar. Yeah. So that's that's really nice team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strong lineup. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for the future, I think the future is really bright for Insomnium because uh, you're not uh, like uh, a band that is not still evolving and it's one of the only insomnium is maybe one of the only bands in that kind of metal that is not staying in that is still evolving and every album is really cool there's no uh shitty album that ah oh, that direction wasn't good or you're like true to yourself true to your dna and uh i think while still pushing boundaries to you of your sound obviously yeah we, we try we try our best not to you know you have to keep it interesting for yourself and then you know it would be really you know i think no one wants to be in a situation where you can like listening your mixes and you say like this is a bit shit <laughs> you yeah. don't want to publish that even but like you who knows we'll we'll see maybe maybe we'll write a shitty album next next time around <laughs> <laughs> don't try that <laughs> we try our best we, we try our best to do good albums yeah and, and put a lot of money and effort yeah is is there um uh, it's been like 20 years insomnium and uh quite a few album you have like yeah. uh eight, eight yeah this, this is our ninth ninth album ninth. already yeah yeah so uh is there something in your mind that you have a uh, still pending an idea of an album or something that you you uh because with, with winter gates i think it was like uh something new you, you wanted to try and it was a great success commercially uh people uh dug that album to death so and is, is there still something you want to to achieve uh, with insomnium you didn't have the chance on songwriting or just uh, in uh a, a, a kind of tour you'd like to do if... yeah well i mean like musically we'll see what happens like we have to kind of digest this album now and then let's see what we can come up with the next one um i mean like touring wise we've been talking about like going to south america going some places we haven't been before so so there's still kind of like round to cover there to do some uh, festivals and, and do some some countries we've never been in so i mean that that's cool and, and and i mean like i think just kind of keep up doing good stuff you enjoy doing i i think you know it's a, it's a nice reward to come up with a good album but and, and you always have like you know the process is never easy and it it, it doesn't get any easier through the years no. so you always have this sort of self-doubt you think like you know will this work is this does this sound good or does this sound shit? Basically, <laughs> you become completely deaf to the process because you're too close to it. And then, and then you know, you, it's hard to like, you, you never know how it's going to end up sounding in the end. You just kind of do your best. And then, you know, n normally it sounds good yeah. in the end, but like, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of unpredictable artistic process. And, and then and we'll see where we're going to be taking that next maybe we get some crazy ideas who knows yeah i'll be very open to uh, to hear some <laughs> crazy new ideas from uh, from your event um what will be uh the dream tour because you will tour with uh enslave obviously uh in the next one but 
what will be the dream tour, the dream band you'd, you'd like to, uh, even if it's not possible, just for the fun of it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, this probably like if you ask from any any member in this band, you would have like different, different. bands that would like to tour. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I mean, like, it would be kind of, yeah, I, w- I would still say like, tour with Metallica or doing something like crazy, oh, yeah. crazy big. And, and, you know, because the scale of doing things is it's just kind of, you know, out, out of this world. And I'm just going to meet those people and I see what happens. That would be cool. Just not, not like, I wouldn't be really interested in my own shows. It's just like more about like, just kind of watching over how things are done because there's been so much drum behind there. And like, you know, bands like Rammstein, the show oh, is amazing, and you know, I don't know, we really? wouldn't probably deal with them, but anyway, the show is just like crazy. See that kind of production come along, that would be just like awesome. Yeah, crazy, as you said. Uh, talking about crazy things, the 70,000 tons of metal, you'll be there, I'll be there. Uh, you have two sets to play. Uh, do you know how much time you have for uh, each set? No, 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 no idea. You don't really learn when you when you get to the boat. You you hear when you're going to be playing, and have, uh, we have an idea how long sets, but we don't know when we're playing. Uh, around time. an hour, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Around that time, yeah. Okay, so are you? Uh, maybe you didn't have the discussion yet, but I think it's like in two weeks. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know a little bit more what you will be playing. Uh, is that two different complete set? Uh, do you want to like do a whole album? Uh, is there uh, something you? Yeah, we haven't about? decided like hundred percent yet, but like definitely we'll be playing some of the new songs we've already released. And maybe there's going to be some surprise guest performance also yeah. on the boat. So you'll see. Yeah, because uh, on your second single, Why Christ, there's a collaboration yeah. with uh, a Running Christ uh, singer. So yeah. they will be on board as well. So Yeah, yeah. So, so there yeah. might be some weird coincidence. Might be something cooking there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So I, I will try to uh, to catch you up, guys, uh, on both. Yep. Sides. So I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. So if I can have uh, some recommendation for <laughs> songs, I will. I will just try. Uh, I'd like to uh, to hear "John to Black" from the my favorite album, "Above the Weeping yep. World." Yep. Uh, Change of heart. On this, I think you 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 do mortal share on that album yeah, quite yeah. regularly. It's, yeah, it's also a banger. Uh, I really like all the winter uh, winter's gate album. Uh, Pale Morning Star on the last one is yeah. one of my uh, all time favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really strong album. This one yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, I really like that one. And Song of the Blackest Bird are also yeah. is, a, is a song I really like. And I know you don't play those song quite often so i'm yeah. throwing ideas there <laughs> <laughs> I know. Them. yeah yeah Maybe I know. yeah it's on short notice but <laughs> <That's sad. Yeah. laughs> well, what would it be be doing for music journalists that's what we live for thank yeah. you guys happy. totally uh <laughs> we just have two minutes left uh yeah. i want to play a little game with you banger of our stinker <laughs> So <laughs> yeah. I will show you albums and you said to me it's a banger or a stinker for you. Ah, <laughs> uh, stinker. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> a lot of people didn't get uh, into that album. Uh, I quite like it, but not completely. Uh, I would say banger. Banger for me too. That's their best album uh, they did uh, since the four first album to yeah. me. Great yeah. album. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> uh, has to be Banger. Yeah. I, I think that album grows a lot on me uh, with yeah. time. At the moment of the release, I wasn't uh, fully satisfied. It was like, no, yeah. right it's now. I same, like same, same with me. I was I was more into the kind of older style, but, you know, it's, it's a good album. And I'm like, I, I like most of the In Flames albums. So, so yeah. yeah. It's a different direction, but it's still yeah. good. It's not Clemens, it's not the Jester Race, but yeah. Great, great songwriting. Yeah. <laughs> the forest season. Uh, I would say stinker. 
Me too. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's quality parts, but I think the yeah. songs are too long for what it is, especially yeah. when you know what Winter Sun can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first two albums. I don't um, know if you're into that band, but uh that's one of my favorite. Well, I would say it's somewhere in the middle. I, I can't I can't really say say anything. I haven't really listened to Blind Guardian that much. No. Yeah. Maybe that one a little bit more, Dance of Death. Uh, I would say, like, you know, Stinker. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like it so much, but the, yeah, the, the, cover art, the cover art is a stinker for sure. <laughs> yeah. What a so, tragedy, that cover art. <laughs> it's not a bad album, but it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm like old enough, like we, we listened, you know, those Maiden 80s albums. And, oh, yeah. you know, that's the Iron Maiden. And that's the gold part. Nothing else doesn't exist, so I'm just kind of like challenged mentality to yeah. old <laughs> Brave New World is a fucking great uh, return album for Bruce yeah. Robinson, so yeah. but there's good stuff really on the new albums there's good stuff on the new albums so yeah yeah last one in the heart uh, of oh banger yeah. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> absolutely I know Marcus is a big fan of that album and uh my my favorite song on that is Ninja and it's his favorite <laughs> also so I have one last. One last. Uh, I haven't heard that. I know Marcus play 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 yeah, this. Yeah. That's an incredible them. traditional heavy metal album. Yeah, so yeah. Play, many too. You you got to hear that, and the leads and guitar solo of Marcus are unbelievably yeah. good on that yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't heard the money so I, I know the band and I know the guys. So just because of that, I have to say banger. That's really, really good. Uh, I um, I own that album for uh, since 2004, the year of the release. I was oh. already a, a fan of Omnium Gatherum, and I didn't know that Marcus was involved in that band, and I was like no. just checking. Yeah. I was like, blown away. Man. Yeah, the leads cool. are incredible. So many. Cool. So thank you for your time. It's already uh, 1:30, uh, 1:32. So. Um, Thank you for taking the time. We'll uh, maybe uh, have the chance to meet on the boat yeah. uh, uh, for the 70,000 tons of metal. And uh, great success with your new album, Ano uh, 1696. So cheers. Uh, cheers, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the interview. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>